Today on Nerd Out, multi-sig. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about multi-sig on Cardano. So let's jump into it. So what is multi-sig? In the most simple terms, multi-sig is when you require more than one key to sign or spend out of an address. Um, there are several ways to do, to do this on Cardano. Simple scripts are what defines the rules for a multi-sig address. So this is a little bit of information that says you know, what keys are involved in signing. It has existed since the launch of Shelly although it's been upgraded several times. So in Allegra, we got time locking scripts. And then most recently in Alonzo, they added Plutoscript, which is not a simple script, but that's the same concept of it's a smart contract script that determines if you're allowed to spend out of a given uh, bucket. So why have I been looking into multi-sig? Uh, both Drip Drops and Project Noom for uh, regular regulatory compliance reasons need to show that we are using multi-sig for added security. And I put out this kind of cryptic tweet earlier this week. That's kind of what I was talking about is killing two birds with one stone. So let's take a look at a simple script. This is a, a script that I ran on testnet and it's very simple. It just requires two keys to spend out of a given address. So the first thing you do is you create a script, and in this, this case, the script is a type all, and we'll talk about the different types at, at the tail end today, but this one is all. That means it requires all of these keys to sign any transaction that is related to this script address. So if you look at it, um, if we just BEC32 decode the addresses, you'll see that all these key hashes are, are the um, the address for the given public key. And so minus the, the 60, which is just a header that says it's an enterprise address. So we've got the first one, the second one, and then there's a command on Cardano CLI to build this into an actual Cardano address. And we'll, we'll dig into this command a little bit later to explain what it's doing under the covers to go from this script file to this address. We'll, we'll dig into all that. We will deep dive. Um, before I jump on, uh, you'll notice that a lot of the addresses on Cardano will start, you know, address test one, and then it'll have a V here. Uh, most of the multi-sig addresses will start with some other letter like a W. That's because they have a different header byte there that, um, tells the system that it's a script address and not a regular, you know, signing key address. So when you go to use a, a script address, you have to add an extra parameter when you're building the transaction. So normally you just say transaction in and you provide the UTXO here that you want to spend. Um, in this case, because this UTXO is held on a script address, you have to specify um, what, what script that is related to. So you also have to put this script on the command line. And then when it builds this TX body file, you'll see at the top here inside these uh, curly brackets, this is your main transaction you've built. You know, we wanted to spend so many of the funds, uh, but then down at the bottom, it also has a section that includes the scripts. So you see here we've got the script, which is zero is all. Um, and then we've got the two addresses required to spend, or I guess, sorry, one is, one is the all and then required to spend. So now that we've signed that transaction, it looks a little bit different than it did before. Um, this is the signed transaction. We're looking at the the decomposed CBOR4. It still has, you know, your UTXO here at the top, your UTXO out, 
um, you know, your amounts, your fees, etc. But then it has a couple of new sections. It's got a map here instead of an array, and at index zero in the map, you've got all of your signatures. So the signature is made up of two parts. It's made up of the public key that you're signing of the you're signing with the private key, but you list the public key. And then it has the signature, which is you're signing the hash of this transaction, which is all the CBOR in this top part. So this signature will match if you took the hash of all the CBOR in the top part. And then you also still have to include the script because, again, you're spending out of this UTXO that is sitting on the script address. So essentially how a, how a validation of this transaction happens is it'll come in and it'll look at the script and say, you know, what address is this related to? It'll, you know, hang on to that address. Then it'll come back up here and look and see, are there any UTXOs sitting on that address that you're going to spend? Yes. Okay, this one is a UTXO that's sitting on the script address. Let's go ahead and check our signatures to make sure that we have both signatures for these two Ad, or these these two keys and yes we have both so then this transaction is valid so that's kind of how it works and that's why you have to include the script with every uh, transaction that's spending out of a multi-sig address so these are called simple scripts but they are actually quasi-complex or they can become complex so I showed you just a very simple all of script which means you have to require n of n keys that you've specified in order for the transaction to be valid. There's also an any of script, which means one of n, and then there's also m of n, which is where you specify an exact number of the keys. So, you know, oh, two out of the three keys have to sign this transaction to be valid, something like that. So really these first two are just a simplification or, or versions of the M of N script where you don't have to specify exactly how many. So all of is N of N, any of is one of N, and then you also have this version that's M of N. And then in Allegra, we also got time locking, which is you say this script has to be spent out of either before a given slot, and we use this before slot to do things like lock um, lock NFT, uh, lock NFTs to a given time time frame where you can't mint anymore on a on a policy. Um, after slot is maybe where you want funds to unlock after a certain time. So like a vesting script, you could use an after a given slot. Somebody is allowed to spend and pull funds out of a multi sig address. And the other thing that makes it more complicated is it, is you can actually nest these rules. So you can say an all of, and then inside the all of, you could have additional scripts. So you could have a script that say uh, a company script that maybe only the CEO and the treasurer are allowed to spend out of any time. So you could say an any of script, but inside of that you could have an, another any of that would be any of CEO treasurer and then coming back to the, the outer layer, you could say um, maybe five of nine board members could also be one of the, the second any of in addition to the first, first one. So you can get as complex as you want with that, and there's no limit to the nesting you can do other than the limit to the transaction size. So how do we go from a script to a multi-sig address. This is where we're gonna dive into that last Cardano CLI command I showed early on that you know, you just say build an address from this script. So what it's actually doing under the covers. So here we have the two public keys that I just wanted to kind of show you the data for. And then I'm putting those into a, a byte array here. And then here is the command where I'm saying uh, look at the key hashes of those. So this is how we get to um, an address from a public key. I've shown this in earlier videos as well. 
but we're taking the Blake2B 224 hash of those public keys and that, that hash is what we're going to put into our script. And so here is, um, here is the script. And this is the JSON version of it at the top. We're not using it. I just put it here so you can kind of see it. And again, it's that key hash that we're putting in there. Key hash. And then the Seabor version of that is down below here. So you can see that all is represented by the number 1. If we had any of or m of n, that would be something different. They would look a little different. And then for type signature, that's represented by a zero. And then we store all of that just kind of like the JSON, except it's stored in Seabor. And then finally, here's the tricky part where we take that whole script Seabor as a byte array, and then we have to add on a script prefix tag, and that's just a null byte. Zero, zero goes on that, and then we take the Blake to be hash of that, and that gives us an address, or it gives us a script hash, and then that script hash we put on the script address prefix. So remember for an enterprise address it was 60 for testnet, for a script address prefix on testnet, it's 70. On mainnet, it would be 71 and 60. Um, but we tack on that extra byte to say this is a script address, and then we plug that into our BEC32 encoder, and then we end up with an actual address. And if you send funds into this address, then it will be protected and locked by that script. So in order to spend out of it, you have to do everything we did, which is provide both of those keys and provide the script when you're building the transaction. So that is the guts of how multi-sig works on Cardano. And with that, nerd out.